Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at your fuse cutout and how to get it upgraded. So just before we get started, let's have a look at the reason for getting it upgraded. So your main cutout fuse has a capacity. Now let's say it's 60 amps. And what this means is everything in your household has to run within 60 amps or otherwise that fuse blows and if the main cutout fuse blows then the DNO will have to come out and replace that and that's not a quick job so when you're adding an EV charger you imagine you're adding more load to your system so an EV charger, a seven kilowatt, is normally around another 30 amps. So you can imagine if your property has a 60 amp fuse and you're using that majority of time and then you add another 30 on, you've halved that already. So there is a high chance that you could blow the fuse. So it's recommended that you get the fuse uprated. So what I thought I'd do today is go through the process with you. I'll show you where you find your DNO, which is your distribution network operator. And it's a simple form. So what we'll do, we'll go through a couple of the questions that they ask you. We'll leave out the basics like your name, address and dates. We'll leave that out, but we'll go through a few bits that they may ask you, which you may be unsure of. And then what I'll do at the same time, I'll show you the parts that they are talking about as well. So let's get started. What I'll do, just to make it clear, this part here is your main cutout fuse. So what you have, you have a supply cable coming into your property, which is this. And from the supply cable, it goes into this. And in this is a fuse. Now normally what happens with these they have a rating written on them. It's normally on a label. Now this one, this particular one, hasn't. So we'll have to assume what the rating is on this. Now I'm going to assume it's 80 amps because after it goes through the meter and back out and into the fuse box the main isolating switch is 80 amps but it doesn't really matter because we're going to get it up rated anyway but that's the basics so let's go through a couple of the questions that you'll get asked when you're filling out the form to get this upgraded let's have a look how you're going to find the form or your local dno so if you do a simple search of who is my dno you should come across a website which is called ENA, Energy Network Association. Click on that, scroll down, and there'll be an option to type in your postcode. It needs your full postcode. Once you've typed that in, you hit search, and it will bring up your DNO. So if you're in Belvedere, Welling, Bexley, Dartford, that sort of area, it tends to be UK Power Networks. And then all you would do, again, you select UK Power Networks and it will take you straight to their page. Now, again, if you scroll down a bit further, it will give you the option to uprate your fuse. And it will ask the reason and you can simply click electric vehicle charging point being installed so now we know how to get there let's go through a few of the questions that you'll get asked so one of the questions you'll get asked is how your electric supply enters the property so this one's quite straightforward it says overhead or underground again majority are going to be underground so if we have a look at this one this client you can see this is the main service cable so this is the cable coming from the road outside so for this one you'd simply select 
on the ground. So another question that you may not know the answer to, it will ask you if you have a single phase supply or a free phase. Now I've mentioned this in a few of my previous videos, most domestic properties are single phase. So let me show you how you actually figure this out. So when you're talking single phase and free phase, what we're talking about is basically three separate supply cables or three supply cables coming into the property. So three lives, if you want to call it that. So what would happen, you would have this coming in, but as you can see, there's only one fuse carrier. Now, instead of one, you'd have three of these. So you'd have three separate fuses. Now, as you can see, this has only got one, so it's a single phase. And most domestic properties will have a single phase. What is best to do, if you're not sure, to speak to your electrician, and you can even ring up the DNO while you're filling up the form and ask them and just say, look, I'm not sure, can you confirm? Majority of the time, if you've got one, it's gonna be a single phase. It will also ask you, do you know what fuse rating you require? Now, it's recommended normally to get it upgraded to 100 amps. Now, that will give you maximum capacity and it just gives you a bit of leeway as well. So you can add the charger on, you can have everything pulling from the house as well. And if at a later stage you decide to add something else on, like solar or a heat pump or anything along those lines you've got the capacity to do so so it's recommended to ask for a hundred amps so they will also ask you the device that you're installing and they'll ask you about that so we're on EV chargers so let's talk about EV chargers so they'll ask you is that a single phase device or a three phase device Again, like I've mentioned many times before, it will be a single phase. If you're in doubt, just speak to your electrician or speak to whoever's installing the EV charger for you. Majority of them, majority at home again, are gonna be single phase. So it's a simple case of putting it down as a single phase, unless you're told otherwise. This one is mainly for your electrician because majority of people won't know this. So they're going to ask about your service cable rating. So they're going to ask what sort of cable is it? And they're going to ask what sort of rating it can take. Now, luckily, they do give the option of in a drop down box of saying not sure or unsure, whatever it may be. So unless your electrician has told you, I'd, I would just put not sure for this one. It's nothing to panic about. They can they can always have a look, and it, all, all they're checking is if the cable can take a hundred amps. And majority incoming are overrated, so they normally put in bigger than they need to be, so they don't burn out basically. So for this one, if you're not sure, if you haven't got the knowledge, it's not a problem. Just put not sure. It won't stop your application going ahead. They might just have to come out and do a site visit or they may ask for some photos. Another question they'll ask is if your service is looped. And I did cover this in the very first video we did, but let's go through it again. What this basically means is outside from the road, you have a main cable and one comes into your property and that is this one and in theory every household has its own cable but what sometimes happens is they've taken a cable from the road it's coming to your property like this and instead of going back out to the road or another one going to your next door neighbors rather they've taken it from the bottom of this and linked it to your neighbors so what you would see, you'd see two cables coming up from the floor. And that would mean you've got a looped service. 
So you can see on this one, there's only one cable coming up from the floor. So that's not a looped service. It could be end of line, but we don't need to get technical because the DNO will have that information anyway. So for this one, as we can see, this property, it, it's not looped. It's only got a single cable coming in. So this, you'd put no. Obviously, if you have got two cables coming in, then you'd put yes. This one is for your electrician again, really. And what they ask is for the maximum demand of the property. So what that's asking, if you had everything going, your lights on, your TV, your cooker, shower, everything going, what would the demand be? What are these appliances demanding? And again, the electrician would have to work it out because it's not always straightforward. But that, that's the principle of it. If, if all the appliances were demanding electricity, what would that add up to? Would that add up to 60 amps? Would it add up to 40 amps? Whatever it may be. So I wouldn't worry too much if you're not sure because it does have the option to say, it's, it norm, the form normally says, leave blank if you're not sure. If your electrician knows, great. If he doesn't, it's not a big deal. But for this one, because you're filling it out, if you're not sure, just put not sure. So another question will be around a load limiting device. And this is built into the EV charger. And what it's there to do is to protect your main fuse and to stop it blowing. So if we link it to the last question, let's just say we worked out that your maximum demand on your property is, let's say 50 amps. Your EV charger consistently pulls 30 amps. So now we're up to 80, and let's say we've got an 80 amp fuse. So now it's potentially, it could blow, but the load limiting device is there to protect. So what you can do, you can set it to say 70 amps. Your installer will install little clamp meters around here, just for a minute. And that will give the EV charger a reading of what the supply is pulling or what's going through it. And because your demand changes, so when your shower is not on, your electric is pulling less, there's less amps being demanded. Same with your cooker, so it's variable. So you may have your car on charge and nothing going and your property is absolutely fine. You know, it might just be pulling 20 amps. So even with your EV charger going, it now totals to 50. But then all of a sudden you turn on your electric shower and that pulls 20 amps. So now you're at the limit again. But what it what the charge will do, since you set it to 70, it will start pulling less amps. It will start pulling less and less and less. So the property isn't pulling no more than 70, which is what we set it at. And then when you stop using the shower, it can then ramp back up again and start charging it at its maximum capacity. So the load limiting device is just there to protect your fuse. It's a very smart feature to have. So have a word with your electrician. You may need one, you may not. Um, your charger may have one, it may not. But again, with this question on the form, if you're not sure, you can select that option. One of the last questions that we need to go through, they'll ask you about your consumer towels and your meter towels. And what we're talking about here, I'll show you. So from your fuse cutout, you can see it's red and black. And these are called tails. So these are going to your meter. So these are meter towels. And then they come out and again these are red and black or if you think of it like that but these are double insulated so you just can't see the colors but it's the same thing and these are called your consumer tails they'll want to know the size 
So the up rating to 100 amps, they need to be 25 millimeters squared. And that's basically, if you imagine the width across. All that's there for is to make sure they can handle 100 amps and they don't burn out. Again, just ask your electrician. If you're not sure, it does have the option. And all these questions that have been asked, like I said before, if a lot of them you ask, not sure, not sure, that's fine. All the DNO will do, they'll have to come out first, do a site visit, double check everything, and then come out another time to actually do the install itself. Last but not least, they'll ask you for a picture of the whole system. So what they'll ask you for, I'll show you. They'll ask you for a picture of your incoming supply. They'll ask you for a picture of your fuse cutout. Your towels go into the meter, your towels coming out and the actual fuse box itself. So you can get it in one picture. I would make sure it's very clear so they can see the setup. And that will be it. The rest of the questions that they ask are all going to be associated with times, the times they can come out, and it will just be your personal information. And then what they normally do is give you an authorization number, and then they get in contact with you a few days later, and then you confirm the date. So what we'll do, we've done this for this client already. When the DNO does come out, we'll come back on that day and we'll look at how how they've changed it or rather we'll look they may not want to be filmed but what we'll do we'll we'll do a comparison so we'll let them change it and you'll be able to see a difference one thing we do recommend as well is whether you get your electrician to do it is to get an isolating switch put in and what that is is simply a switch and I'll show you the placement of the switch where we want it is between the towers coming out and going into your consumer unit and the reason for that is so we can switch the power off because this isn't actually owned by you or me this up to up to the meter is actually owned by the DNO and that's why they have these seals on them down there so we're not actually allowed to touch this but this is the only way to actually kill the power to the fuse box so if you need if we need to change this over we normally have to give them a call and they have to pull the fuse but if we've got an isolating switch here and they can normally place it here they're not very big if you ever need work doing on your board so you may you know get your EV charger put in a board change if you decide to go for solar later we can isolate it simply by switching it on and off there and it kills the entire power to this side so it is recommended that you get that done again if you're not sure just speak to the electricians they'll know straight away what you're talking about and that's it that's the end of it so it's, it's a very simple form to fill out the questions are quite simple and if you do have any questions please leave them in the comments or get in contact with us and thank you for watching i'll see you on the next one